On the 2nd of April, 1993, Ellie Nesler took the law into her own hands in a Northern California courtroom by shooting to death Daniel Driver in the head and neck five times. 35-year-old Daniel Driver was a Christian camp employee who in the summer of 1988 allegedly abused the then six-year-old son of Ellie Nesler, Willie Nesler. Ellie Nesler was praised by some as a protective mother, driven to act by the prospect of having her traumatised son testify against Driver in an open court, which would then spark a national debate about vigilantism. The fact is I did kill a man, that was wrong what I did, but on the other hand I think a lot of people understand the frustration that I went through. The sympathetic portrait of Ellie Nesler, painted by her defence team, began to disappear however within weeks of the crime, when Tess found Ellie to have been high on methamphetamine at the time of the shooting. It had also come to light that Ellie had a criminal record with a conviction at 18 for auto theft and had served several months in a California Youth Authority facility. Had Ellie Nesler gone too far, or was she simply protecting her son and the world from a very dangerous man? Eleanor Starr Nesler was born on August 2nd, 1952, to her parents Ellsworth and Nellie Starr. Ellie was the eldest of three daughters, and she had grown up with her family in the hills around Jamestown. As a young woman, she drove a tractor for local cattle ranchers, installed irrigation pipes and worked on cars. Ellie married at 20, but then quickly divorced two years later. Not long after, Ellie met Bill Nesler, a gold mine and crop duster. The couple married and soon had their son Willie, and then they decided to move to Liberia, as Bill had been hired to start a gold mine. Here, Ellie gave birth to their daughter, Rebecca, but she later returned home with her children, as she grew tired of her husband's long absences and decided she did not want to raise her children in Liberia. After returning home, she got by on welfare checks and moved on with life as a single mother to her two children. In the summer of 1988, six-year-old Willie Nesler started attending church camp. Here, young Willie Nesler was allegedly molested and sodomized by camp employee Daniel Driver. Willie kept this a secret for a year because he was afraid for his life, as well as the lives of his mother and his little sister. He said he'd kill us all if I told anyone, said Willie. Willie finally told his aunt, saying, It hurt me too much and if I didn't tell her, he was going to hurt me more. Willie was not alone in claiming Daniel Driver had done this to him. Four other boys came forward and said that they were also sexually abused by Daniel. Daniel Driver was then charged with molesting the boys from July 1986 to September 1988, during his time working at the church camp. It was then also revealed that years earlier, Daniel Driver had pleaded guilty to multiple counts of sex with boys in the San Jose area, but had been given probation after the judge in the case received numerous letters from members of Driver's church vouching for his character. For years, the boys waited to testify at trial, and during that time, Ellie said that Daniel stalked her son. However, finally, the day came for the boys to testify against Daniel Driver. On the 2nd of April, 1993, the preliminary hearing for Daniel Driver was taking place for allegedly molesting Willie and four other boys. Ellie Nesler and her son were present, and Willie was due to testify against Daniel Driver. The 11-year-old Willie, however, was so afraid to testify. In fact, he was starting to get ill and wanted to be sick, which was really hard for Ellie to see. In the courthouse, she said that Daniel looked up and down her son and smirked, which caused Willie to vomit. He had a really cocky attitude. He knew he was going to slip through the system. I snapped, said Ellie. During the break, Ellie reached into her sister Janet's bag to find something to help calm her stomach. However, as she looked around inside the purse, she felt a small handgun. In that moment, she knew exactly what she needed to do. As Ellie Nesler was being led to the witness stand after the break, she pulled out the small handgun and then shot Daniel Driver in the back of the head five times. I looked him in the eyes and I put six bullets, 
five of them hitting him in the head, and one hit the wall, and all of them were fatal shots. Everything was slow motion, he was dead. Ellie Nesler surrendered immediately, and witnesses said she appeared calm as she was led from the courtroom in handcuffs. You might think that somebody who did this would be shriveled up, but she was proud, said Rick Shackley, a shop owner in the town. Ellie's sister Jan said that Daniel Driver had set off the shooting of a smirk at the family as he was led into the courtroom. She wouldn't have done it if he didn't have that cocky look at the beginning. I have to be nervous, you know, I'm facing 30 to life, you know, that's something to be nervous about, but um, I feel pretty confident. Whether I go to jail or whether I get an acquittal, I want to see the, the laws change for innocence. In January 1994, Ellie Nesler pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity and was convicted on a lesser charge of voluntary manslaughter. Nesler is pleading not guilty by reason of insanity. There are still plenty of people who think she did the right thing. Ellie was sentenced to 10 years in prison, and in 1995, she spoke out on the Oprah show from prison, alongside her children who were there in person. During the show, Willie mentions that he didn't regret telling his mother about the molestation, but that it was bittersweet. In a way, I'm glad I did, because now he can't hurt any more kids, and I don't have to worry about him hurting me. On the other hand, I lost my mum. Though Ellie was sentenced to 10 years in prison, Willie believes his mother shouldn't be punished. Because I think he deserved it. I mean, going out and hurting kids like that. I wasn't the only one. Ellie said she had regrets for doing what she did, but she said she also couldn't bear to see how Willie's abuse had affected his spirit. My son was afraid, and now he's not afraid. He's a normal little boy, and he can play. So I'm sorry that I killed someone, and that I'm not with my children. But on the other hand, I wish the judicial system would have taken care of it. I wish I didn't have to. Since Ellie said Willie was abused worse than the other boys, his testimony would have come last at the trial. But Ellie said that Willie was so nervous he didn't want to take the stand. I told him he had to, and he responded, Mum, I can't. Willie said he didn't want to face Daniel and relive the horrible memories. I thought he was going to hurt me again when I went into the courtroom. It brought back so many memories looking at him like that, and it just scared me, said Willie. Ellie said she pulled the trigger to stop Daniel Driver from hurting other children, and to prevent Willie from having to testify in front of other people. I didn't want other people to know what happened to Willie. I didn't think he should have to face this man face to face. They were traumatizing my child. These children should not have to face the man that molested them. Murdering Daniel, however, was not Ellie's plan all along. She said, I had no intention of doing it until my son was the last and couldn't testify. He was vomiting into a garbage bag. It was then that Ellie looked at her sister Jan and said, I'm going to get a gun and I'm going to kill him. Being in jail and separated from her children, who had been sent to live with relatives, wasn't the only hardship in Ellie's life. Two months before her sentencing, Ellie found out she had inflammatory breast cancer. The doctors were unable to remove her breast because the cancer had already spread to her lymph nodes and throughout her body. She was told that she had a 50% chance that she would ever see five years. For a while, Ellie tried to keep the diagnosis a secret. I was living in denial and didn't want my children to know anything about the cancer. However, good news was just around the corner for Ellie, as in October 1997, after serving nearly four years, she won an appeal based on juror misconduct and was released from prison. After Ellie was released from prison, their family's troubles with the law were far from over. The Nestler family remained entangled in the legal system. In 2002, Ellie was sentenced once again to six years in prison after pleading guilty to selling and possessing methamphetamine. However, she got an early release from a women's facility in 2006. Meanwhile, her son Willie, who had been raised by his aunt, had also gotten into legal troubles of his own after his life had begun to spiral out of control. Growing up, Willie repeatedly landed in juvenile hall, in teenage work camps, and in jail as an adult. 
During a five-year period, he was arrested by sheriff's deputies and booked into county jail at least 18 times on charges that included robbery and drug-related offences. While Ellie was serving her time again in prison, 23-year-old Willie was convicted of first-degree murder in 2005 for stomping to death a man who had been hired to help clear the Nestler family's property. Willie Nestler had killed David Davis in a fit of rage. Davis had accused Willie of stealing his tools, and this provoked Willie to attack him. Willie Nestler killed Davis less than an hour after he was released from a 30-day sentence for an earlier assault on the same man. He is currently serving 28 years to life for murder in the first degree. During his time serving his sentence, Ellie's health started declining rapidly. Prison officials allowed William Nestler to speak to his mother, but she quickly became too ill on Christmas night. In December 2008, Ellie passed away from breast cancer at the age of 56. Years later, Ellie's daughter Rebecca, at the age of 23, returned to The Oprah Show to reflect on her family's tragic past. Oprah said, You all suffered because your mum, in an act of rage in the courtroom, didn't want to see that molester go free again. Any mother or father watching can understand what that rage feels like. Rebecca said that since Ellie and Willie had been in prison for most of her life, she hasn't been able to move forward of her own life. It's been really hard to move on, and now that I have a normal life, I'll catch myself laughing with my family, and I'll sit back and I'll be like, you know, Mum and Willie should be here with me in this moment. They should be able to laugh like this. It had been so difficult for Rebecca to see her big brother in so much pain due to that abuse he had endured. A long time ago, my mum told me that my brother was in so much pain that he was going to kill himself, and that hurt me a lot, said Rebecca. She went on to say thank you to the supportive loved ones who took her in after her mother went to prison. She said that she's doing okay and living a normal life. Despite the fact that they've been separated for years, Willie and Rebecca remain very close and often write letters to each other. Probably the first thing that we talk to each other about is gonna be mom. She's like definitely the biggest influence in our life and she's our mom, you know, and we don't have her anymore. We have each other. There's a lot of mixed emotion when it comes to this case. Many people across the world believe that Ellie should not have gone to prison. I don't know, I think I would do the same thing in her situation. It divided the nation and created a national debate about vigilantism. Some supporters stuck by her and had t-shirts and stickers proclaiming, Nice shooting, Ellie. Whilst others believed she should have been tried and treated as a murderer and not a hero, saying that if she had been excused, other people would start doing the same. Others further said that they understood her emotional turmoil that drove her to pick up the weapon and fire that day, but that as a society we cannot justify her actions. I am not supporting Ellie Nessler in the action that she took to solve the problem. Vigilantism isn't justice, it is the ultimate lawlessness, and that a nation of vigilantes would be a fearsome place. When Ellie had first appeared on Oprah, Oprah had said to her, We all know it is wrong to kill people in this country, and I'm certainly not advocating that anybody should, but I think that it is just one of the greatest miscarriages of justice that you are behind bars right now. Her actions meant that she could no longer be with her children, and that they had to grow up without her, which obviously greatly impacted Willie. At the time, Ellie said she had pulled the trigger because she was afraid the system would fail her, and that Daniel would be set free. It's so sad to hear that she felt like she had no other option but to do this, and to take the law into her own hands.